Hey folks, welcome to Between the Lines. I'm Matt Doyle, MLSsoccer.com's armchair analyst, and today we're going to take a look at how the Montreal Impact used their counterattack to get the best of the Seattle Sounders at CenturyLink Field. The first point to make is that MLS teams have traditionally borrowed from German, Dutch, Spanish, English, and Mexican schools of thought when it comes to tactics. There hasn't been a lot of Italian influence. That's going to change with the Montreal Impact. Obviously, the roster has a huge Italian flavor. Coach Marco Schalabam is Swiss, but he's followed the Italian game for years, so it's no surprise to see the team come out in a defensive shape with a defensive bent. However, that does not make this Catanaccio. There's no libero, no sweeper for one. Uh, for two, the impact marked zonally, not man-to-man. -man. In Catanaccio, which was developed over 50 years ago in Italy, uh, you saw man-to-man -man marking all over the field, and you saw the libero sitting deep, picking up the loose balls, and igniting the attack. For Montreal, the similarity is that they played a very, very deep line, inviting the Sounders forward and then hitting them on the counterattack. That is old school Italian soccer, and that's where we're going to begin. This is an example of how deep Montreal typically played, sitting maybe 30 yards from their own goal. Here's Seattle in a similar situation with the ball in a similar spot in the field. They're at least 10 to 15 yards higher up the pitch. Obviously, that left Montreal with plenty of space to run in behind the Seattle defense should they be able to ignite the counter. Now, what made the counter so effective was that they had pace on the flanks, but they were also able to use three different guys as the focal point of the attack. Here we see lone defensive midfielder Patrice Bernier winning the ball deep, then surging forward and eventually springing Senna Nyasi in on goal. And here we have center forward Marco De Vaio peeling off the front line, working into space, and then using Nyasi's speed on the wings to launch yet another counter at Seattle's goal. And finally, they have their traditional playmaker, Felipe, who picked up where he left off in 2012 with a game-winning assist. Those are three different guys who could hit that final ball, which gives the Sounders defense too much to think about. The shifting focus keeps the Seattle defense guessing, and they're often totally unable to pressure service. Here, defensive midfielder Andy Rose is an obvious culprit. Other times, including on the goal, they have too many men trying to apply pressure as three Sounders converge on Felipe here. None of them track the runner. Arnaud gets in for a beautiful finish. Now, it's not foolproof and it's not perfect. The impact did give up 15 shots, two of which hit the woodwork. On a different day, it could have been a different result. But you can see they're already much more defensively organized than they were last year. And it's no wonder, because the Italian school of tactical thought has finally come to the league. That'll do it for us this week, but we'll be back with another tactical breakdown. Tweet at us with topics you'd like to see us discuss, and don't forget to make yourself heard in the comments below.